We're urging people, you know, to get out of the storm's path, even telling people that may live here in Texas. If you've got a trip planned out there, maybe to Tampa in the coming days or so, you may want to rethink your trip. Yeah, I would strongly re re rethink that trip, Cleo. In fact, yesterday I was on the phone with my brother. He lives in Tampa. He has now left or is not going anymore to Tampa. He was out of town. So he also took the warning and I'm so grateful for that because this is still a very strong hurricane and it will remain a major hurricane by the time it makes landfall tomorrow evening. Right now it does have maxing winds of 150 miles per hour. That's considered a strong category four and it'll keep its category four four status for the remainder of the day. Wednesday morning. Look at that still a category four. We're going to take you now to Wednesday evening. This is uh, 125 mile per hour wind speeds, and that's really honing in on the Tampa Sarasota area, eventually making landfall Wednesday evening into the overnight, and then it keeps its hurricane status as it moves inland. That means we could still see 100 plus mile per hour wind speeds in the middle of Florida. In addition to that heavy rain, eventually this is going to trek into the Atlantic. Luckily, it will not be impacting areas like Georgia or the Carolinas that were just heavy impacted by Helene last week. Because of the high winds, a big portion of central Florida has a hurricane warning. That's the pink that you see there. Tropical storm warnings on the north and south side of that. And the storm surge, this is what is going to be likely record breaking for some parts of uh, coastal Florida, 10 to 15 feet of water that gets pushed inland by this hurricane will be possible between Tampa, Sarasota and just south of Sarasota. Even in Fort Myers, six to 10 feet of storm surge will be possible. So this something that is going to be incredibly dangerous, especially in the next 24 to 48 hours for western and uh, inland uh, Florida here. We're luckily just seeing really calm weather. We had that cold front come through yesterday and that cold front helped drop our temperatures a tad, help bring in slightly drier air. So that's why it felt a little bit more crisp this morning. Right now, outside of the WFA studios, we're looking at 72 degrees. It is going to warm up to about 84 degrees around 3, 86 degrees around 5 this afternoon. Winds will stay light out of the southeast at about 5 to 10. Now this is going to be a couple of degrees cooler than yesterday, but still technically warm for this time of the year. If you're spending any time outside, ragweed, elm still at a moderate count, fungus at a low count, and the high temperature today will be about 86 for Fort Worth, Denton 85 in McKinney. The normal for this time of the year is 82. We'll be trending about four degrees above that today, and it's because of that that ridge of high pressure. While it is centered over areas of the desert southwest, it's going to expand to include North Texas. That's why our temperatures are going to be climbing in the next few days. That's why we're not going to notice any big changes, but that's also what keeps our nice mornings in place. It's just those warm afternoons that we're also going to be dealing with, especially come this weekend. On Friday, end of the week, 90 degrees, 91 on Saturday, 92 on Sunday. And by the time Sunday, Monday rolls around, look at what the normal temperature for the time of the year is, the upper 70s. So again, we will be trending well above that in terms of our high temperatures. So here's what it looks like here as we head towards the end of the week. Temperature in the afternoon slowly climbing, morning lows stay in the 60s. Now next week, we could see a little rain potential middle part of the week. Temperatures are going to drop into the low 80s. So again, a little closer for this time of the year to normal, but otherwise it's going to remain on the warm side and on the dry side the next couple of weeks.